What's up, everybody? The doctor is in. Michael Prati here at Evo 2019, being joined by Ultra David, attorney at law. How are you doing today, man? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, busy weekend for you, uh, doing some Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's been a lot. I mean, yesterday actually was not that busy because MK didn't start until I think it was 2 p.m. But I had some meetings in the morning, and then there was commentary, and now today has been entirely commentary, and it's basically like running a thousand person tournament in a single day as far as today is concerned yeah luckily you get to just talk about it right oh yeah, yeah. i got the easy gig for sure um now speaking of commentary something you've been pretty vocal about this year is changing your style okay um and so now it's you know it's been a couple of years changing style i feel can be very difficult and it, it seems a little scary right yeah i think that is true um i went through a long period where i think i didn't really think critically about it uh when i began doing it in 2010 or whatever it was. For the first few years, I definitely thought critically about it often, and I feel like I tried to make a lot of changes actively. And then I was very complacent about it for a while and kind of didn't, didn't find much inspiration in other games or in sports anymore, which is kind of what I had done earlier. And then, I don't know, over maybe a year ago, I was thinking about it more again, and I realized that there are lots of good commentators who, who should I should be using for inspiration. I think that they have a lot of really good ideas. And while it's definitely not my goal to you know, copy what they do, I feel like I wouldn't be good at that. But I think that they have ideas that would be valuable for me to incorporate into my own commentary. So that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah, I mean, you said you know other commentators do good work. Um, was there anybody in particular that you were like, like snapped that you were like, oh, I need to think about this more? Yeah, I think it's Katana Prime. Um, Katana Prime, I think, is really great as a commentator. He does a lot of good things, and there, many of them are things that other people do, but one thing that he does that I think is great is that he'll find little moments to sort of bring in the, uh, like the background of the game. And I don't, I don't mean like the storylines. I mean like things happen in the game that are not just the strategic choices. There's a whole bunch, there's a whole audiovisual work that's going on, and the background is there, and there are characters walking around in the background. The game is like more than what I usually think of it as, which is all I've cared about traditionally is just the strategy and everything else not. But there is a lot more and I think that it's valuable in commentary to bring that up and to, I mean, without being like too much about it, to sort of throw in like a flourish now and then that sort of re relates to what's going on in the game in a way that I think could be really colorful and not a lot. That's actually really insightful. I've never actually thought about that because, you know, like you said, most people think about the strategy, the yeah. 1v1, you know, the, the actual moving parts of the game. But, you know, these are full-fledged games. They're, right. They're fully evolved, fully thought out, and, you know, tons of work have been put into them. So, no, you're right. That is actually and, crazy. And that's true whether you're, whether you're the kind of commentator who wants to focus on the strategic choices themselves, sort of the, explan the explanation part of it, mm -hmm. or if you're the kind of commentator who wants to be excited and hype about it, in either case, you're like focusing on just the strategic element, which I think should probably be most of the commentary anyway, but like it is nice, I think, to also bring in a little flourish of the other stuff that goes on in the game. Yeah, and you know, you talked about the two different types of commentators, or as some other Scenes like to call them casters. I know you're not a huge fan of That's that. Whatever, one. yeah. Um, but you, you touched on like you know, there's the excitement and then there's the um, strategic, I guess, color versus play by play. Um, and so something I've noticed, especially this year, is that TOs are getting a lot better at pairing similarities together instead mm. of contrasting them. You know, what do you think is the not decision there? Because it's obviously you know um, uh, thought about. Like they do this on purpose. Sure. Um, so you, what do you what do you think is you know the drive there? You mean in commentary in to, to like in pair, like pairings? Uh, yeah, to like keep the like the like um, Pai Chung and Yipes together, and yeah. then like Say Jam and like James together. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, I think that you do have to think about that stuff. There have just been sort of changes in how the FGC approaches commentary. Uh, not until just a few years ago were there ever explicit commentator pairings. Anyway, it was really more like, well, we have one or two commentators, so they're just going to be there the whole day. Uh, and whoever's there is who they're commentating with. Or it's just totally haphazard and it's whoever who wants to drop onto the mic. <laughs> or even if you have three people who are supposed to do it, the rotation is up to them. It's now become a little bit more structured. And along with that, um, I think Tenno in particular has done a really good job at structuring commentary blocks and at thinking about who should commentate with whom. So it's not, yeah, I mean, we just weren't 
doing that before, um, there wasn't an entity who like whose job that was. And now there's like enough money in it, I think, that there is somebody whose job that is. And I think that that's valuable. Um, I mean, not having a set schedule or a set rotation or whatever was valuable, I think, for me in learning how to approach commentating with many different people. Like learning how to sort of be all around. Whatever their strength is, I try to highlight that without running over it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's great to have like a, to know who I'm going to be commentating with beforehand. I can kind of game plan for it and think about how to approach commentary with that person. If it's somebody who I haven't commentated with before, you know, hopefully I'll have seen them commentate and have an idea. But if not, then I'll like listen to some of what they've done in the past and try to get an idea of how I should approach it too. And then do you like reach out to them and be like, hey, you know, we're doing it this weekend. You know, what do you want to do? Or, nah. Nah. Um, I, I really, so I like to have a mix of being prepared and then being spontaneous. And so the preparation, I think, is more in how to handle situations than what exactly the situations are going to come out as. So it's like a little bit more of a higher view, I think, uh, of what, what could come yeah, up. Yeah, because you never know what, what players are going to do what. Totally. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you just have to be on the ball about. So, yeah, I, I don't want to, like, get into the nitty-gritty of what we're going to do, I, but I think it is good to have sort of a general game plan. I don't, I don't want to have something where it's set roles, like one person is always the color commentator and the other person the narrator or whatever. I think I've never been a fan of that. It's a little fast paced in FGC, I think, for yeah. that. You know, it flourishes very well in you know MOBAs and even somewhat uh, first person shooters. But I mean, fighting games are over in 90 seconds or less. For sure, you really don't have that much time. Um, but something that I'm curious on your take on is adding like an analyst desk style, because mm. we one thing the FGC does have a decent amount of is downtime. That would be nice, and it's something that. We have asked for many, many times. I think the first time I ever asked for that was probably Evo 2011 or 2012. Oh, wow. Forever Way ago. Earlier. Forever ago. Wow. So it's something that we've always wanted to do. And just isn't that feasible. Um, it costs money. It costs time. Somebody has to run that. It's, there's, it more goes into it. So maybe in some future we'll have that money and time, but it's not there yet. So in the meantime, I'd rather us focus on the things that we do have. But yeah, yeah, definitely, like, at some point, it would be great to have that. Yeah, like, I remember an interview with Logan recently where he was going on, like, yeah, we want to do all this cool stuff with you guys. Yeah, yeah. But guess what? It costs money. Exactly, and, exactly. you know, unfortunately, we're just not quite <laughs> there yet. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it definitely feels like it could get there someday. Um, yeah. And, I mean, we do see, like, E-League having somewhat of, you know, that type of setup. Yeah, it's existed. E-League's an example. Uh, Capcom Cup has had that. Uh, the Tekken World Tour had that at their finals. So, I mean, it's something that we've done sometimes. But I definitely agree. It would be nice to do that more often. Yeah, now, you've actually been doing some E-League MK11. Yes. Uh, tell me a little about that. That's been awesome. It's been a weekly show that they've been doing. I think it's over now. But the goal of it was to get more eyes, not just on the game, but on the players of the game. Yeah. So, to, like, focus not just on the E-League stream itself, but also to try to get people to watch the stream of the people who are competing. Yeah, It's been it's like a very community-focused idea. I really appreciate that. And it was very, it was a different format from what at least I'm used to. Yeah. Like seeing the players like just throwing themselves at online, but like betting against themselves too. Yeah, that's cool. Like that, that was so interesting and it just felt so unique that I, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. I think we should see more of that. I definitely agree with you. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Now, MK11's this weekend. It's coming up uh, later today. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun game. I agree. It's the game that I've been playing the most since it came out. Um, I feel like I can't, like, credibly learn more than two or three active games at a time. Yeah, It's, I mean, like, just hard. I don't know. I don't have enough time. So, for me right now, that's Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And since MK is the newer game, I've been spending more time making sure that I'm all up on it. And Yeah, I am having a blast. Yeah, and, you know, there's... From an outsider perspective, it seems like there's decent character diversity yes. as well, which, you know, some other games kind of struggle with. You know, people are talking about Karen and Street Fighter, but it's also season four, arguably the best season. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not... In, in both games, I'm happy with character variety, to be honest. It's true that Karen has done really well. There's been a Karen in each grand finals of every premiere so far, right? Yeah. But it's... Punk and Bonchan, two players who have been using the character the whole and time. And one of them has been flexing bon uh, Sagat. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And actually, Punk has been playing uh, Colleen in some matchups. Like, he's not exclusively Karen either. So that's fine. I mean, if it's two people running the show like that, what are you going to do? And as far as everybody else, like, there's a lot of character variety. We've had a lot of really interesting top eights and even top 12s. Yeah, and now MK, something a lot of people grew up with. I'm sure you did as well. I was talking to Romanova earlier, and I was like, I think I saw the movie when I was, like, eight. Like, yeah, okay, probably yeah. not ideal, but, you know, what? these yeah. things happen. And so, I mean... It's a Saturday final this year. Yeah. What do you think it needs to become a Sunday final? Because I, I thought Mortal Kombat would have been almost a shoe in honestly. It's too gross. Fair. That's why. I mean, I, don't, I haven't talked with anybody to confirm that, but my strong suspicion is that they went in too hard on the gore. And that... Yeah, I've heard a couple people somebody, saying Somebody, whether that it's, it's Evo or whether it's Mandalay Bay or whatever it is, just, like, doesn't want that in the arena. And like I said, I don't have any confirmation of that, but I don't know why else it wouldn't be. It's a big scene. It's a popular game. It's an exciting game. It would make for a great experience for the people who are in the, the arena, I think. And it's been there in the past. And it's super hype. I agree. I, I love it. Now, do you think that there's something that NRS could or maybe would want to do about that? Because I've seen in other scenes, you know, other global scenes where they take steps to take out some of it now obviously know. mk is designed around it <laughs> yeah that's the thing yeah but you know maybe I, I would love it i mean so in mortal kombat 9 there was a zombie mode and zombie mode had no blood there were no fatalities you just like went right into the next game so people played it because it was faster for that reason right there's no fatality yeah. but the other reason is that if you like don't want blood then there's a mode for you but in mk11 Crushing blows are such a big part of it. Fatal blows are such yeah. a big part of it. So even if you were to turn off something like fatalities, you still have all these little mini scenes where there's, you know, people are being impaled and their bones are getting broken. And they just, they made it like that. And so the, the gameplay as a result is great. But yeah, if you're somebody who's not into that kind of... Yeah, then it's, it's hard to you know, avoid. I, I don't really know how you get rid of that, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. Now, MK11 Season Pass is a thing. Uh, Nightwolf is the latest character. Um, a little bit of a hiccup there, because he, he was leaked as well, right? Yeah, the whole roster was leaked, I think. <laughs> so that, that seems to be an issue with, you know, mainstream fighting games, at, you know, this weekend here. Yeah. Um, really unfortunate, but, you know, you said that you're that probably going to play him, right? Oh, I'll definitely give him a try. Yeah, I try to try each new character when they come out. And yeah, I mean, he's a character that I was never interested in in the past, but I think some of his moves look pretty cool, like useful, interesting, like he could have a unique variety of gameplay. Mm -hmm. And that's what I go in for. So that's, if that is the case, you know, once he comes out, we try him out, then yeah, I would definitely give him a go. Um, NRS has, I think, done a really awesome job at making characters that, at least in my opinion, previously were not so interesting into really cool characters. Like I. Never thought twice about Baraka in previous games, and now he's my he, main. He's pretty OD. It's he's sick in this. I love it. And same with Scarlet. I never really thought much about her. Now I think she's super cool, very unique, both in looks and character and in gameplay as well. So I expect that kind of thing out of Nightwolf, too. And so NRS community, you've kind of said it a couple times. Every time you get tweeted out by the Mortal Kombat page, you're like, man, I really wish that hadn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean... The competitive scene is awesome. I've been hanging out with those guys for, I don't know, since 2011, I guess. Long time. Some of my good friends. The more casual scene is something that I'm not as sort of connected to, I guess. So when there is a tweet that's from the Mortal Kombat account, then, you know, people, I get it, people want their characters and they don't really have a good way to like let anybody know other than Twitter. Yeah. And so they express that through Twitter. I mean, I understand. I think it's a very understandable thing to do if you're somebody who's in that in that situation. I get it. But yeah, from me, then I end up getting like a hundred tweets of I really want Molina, <laughs> whatever it is. Like I don't have any control over that. You know, I don't. I don't have any. Why say. do Why do you think it's so much different with NRS versus like Capcom though? Oh, I'm not sure it really is. To be honest, uh, each does time, it happen on Capcom too? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, Capcom fighters, not so much because that's the competitive scene. Yep. And so like the NRS esports Twitter. Same thing, it's mostly the competitive people involved. But when Street Fighter tweets, the at Street Fighter account, for sure. Same kind of thing, everybody wants to see their favorite character. Yeah. Some of 
some people's favorite characters are coming back, though. Yes. Uh, we do have Poison and E Honda yeah. and Lucina from uh, Final Fight. Really? I, I thought it was interesting. Now, I, I don't traditionally come from Street Fighter. Street Fighter 4 was my first introduction very late in the cycles after Ultimate or Ultra. Um, so, what do you think about these characters? Because to me, they, they're, they're new characters for me. Okay. I'm really excited for Honda. He was the only original Street Fighter 2 character who wasn't in already, so yeah, I think, I think it's cool World that he's Warrior. back. Yeah. On top of that, uh, he was my main in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, so I really like the character. And he was a very unique sort of defensive powerhouse, and I hope that he plays like that because there aren't that many characters in SF5 that do have this very like overpowering defensive style. Plenty of offensive characters, but he was like a oh, tank. Yeah. He was a tank. And I hope that he is like that again so I'm excited for that if that is how he is and then Lucia I never played Final Fight really so I don't have that much of a connection but from what I've seen in the character trailer I think she looks really cool she has a cool cool looking fireball that seems like it's, it's very interesting. different yeah. yeah I think it'll be very interesting to see how different player or players try to take advantage of it definitely because like you said there's so many different angles you can get out of it and poison uh, I thought was fascinating as a character in Street Fighter 4 uh, very interesting tools, and she seems a little different this time. Maybe a little bit rangier. I don't know. It's kind yeah, of that, she that, has that, there's a lot of whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's great. Um, I I try to do two things in fighting games. I try to throw people and I try to zone people. Those are my two things. <laughs> so if there's one character who has both a command grab, which I think she does in V Trigger, and if those whip yeah, marbles, I think, I think are it was like, V Trigger too. Yeah, and if the whip is a zoning tool, then I mean I'm definitely into it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> So you're sacrificing Geef again? Season 4 Geef? Uh, maybe. I mean, I don't think that I would ever give him up entirely, but yeah, if there's one character who can do both of those things, like if I can get my Zangief and my Dalsim in one character, that'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Uh, so final question. If you could put anybody in Mortal Kombat that's not already leaked slash already in the game, who would it be? Doom guy, I think Doom guy would be cool just to bring in like more eyeballs. I think that'd be pretty pretty cool. Uh, they could probably do a lot of interesting things with the character too. Uh, I guess my my honest answer is that it doesn't matter that much to me. Um, I okay. All, all I'm into, like the the intro thing, right, where I only have focused on the strategic aspect of commentary forever. That's just how I've always viewed fighting games, yeah. and so the characters themselves have been kind of a secondary thought for me, for me most of the time. So you just look at them as like wireframes? and they're they're like, they're, Yeah. Do they do what I want them to do? 100%. 100%. Yeah. They're a collection of hitboxes and hurtboxes and frame data. Yeah. That's actually very valid. That's a good way to think about it. Now, anybody you want to shout out? Any projects you want to you know put more eyes on? Uh, you can watch me stream and follow me at twitch.tv slash ultrachentv. And I'm on Twitter at ultradavid. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.